Applaudissez Imola Mihalets. Dear Hermione Granger, the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry is hereby inviting you to join to an important mission. The wizarding world is under a threat by a serious brain disease called the Parkinson disease that is known to cause via involuntary movements and shaking hands. However, what is less known that three quarters of the patients do suffer from chronic pain as well. And for the last 50 years, the best of muggle and visit scientists have been trying to understand why people living with Parkinson's disease suffer from pain. However, it remains still not entirely understood what the cause of pain is in Parkinson's disease. Hereby, we are asking you to join to our research to help us to understand why these patients suffer from pain and help to improve the treatment of our patients at the Hogwarts Infirmary. Yours sincerely, Albus Dumbledore. So I said, yes, I'm helping because believe it or not, but pain makes life more miserable than mother symptoms too. Patients are unable to carry out their daily activities because of their pain. It significantly reduces their quality of life and even depression is more likely to develop when people suffer from pain. The pain is like a dementor. It brings only sadness and darkness in your life. If you don't know what a dementor is, well, it sucks all the joy out of life, leaving no happiness behind. So while I was making my research at the Hogwarts library, I found out that the way how these patients feel pain is not quite the same how I do feel it. For some reason, they are more sensitive to pain than the general population, meaning that their pain thresholds are lower. What does it mean in practice? It is easy to imagine that not everyone reacts in the same way to the presence of dementors, right? Harry, for example, uh, he faints right away as he sees a Dementor approaching him, while on the contrary, Drago Malfoy does not. But it doesn't mean that Harry will suffer from pain in permanence. He is just more sensitive. And the sensation of pain does not only depend on pain sensitivity, but on the brain's magical ability. Yes, the brain can do magic. It is like a wand. It's a powerful tool that can create incredible magic, like modulating pain. The brain can reduce the sensation of pain through several ways, regardless of the pain threshold. And one of the spells that allows the reduction of pain is the Patrona spell. It focuses on a positive memory but full of positive emotions. So to make a successful Patrona spell, all you need is a well-functioning brain, positive emotions, and the ability to concentrate on them. Sounds easy, right? Good. Because I'm going to teach it to you right here, <coughs> right now. So for the followings, what you're going to do, you grab your right hand, okay, I'm showing it in a mirror, you pinch it like this, like squeezing your skin a little bit, everyone, okay? So to, you create a slight sensation of pain. And now you just close your eyes and follow my voice. No cheating. Guide your attention to your breathing, how you inhale and how you exhale. And with every inhale that you're taking, you're becoming more and more conscious about this feeling. It's becoming more and more intense. And with every exhale, you just give a space to this feeling. You accept it. You embrace your pain. Stay with this feeling for one more cycle of breath. Then inhale, exhale, and just let your hand go. Let the pain go. Still keep your eyes closed. Change the side. Just pinch the skin on your left hand, just like you did with the other hand before. And guide your attention to your breathing, how you inhale and how you exhale. And with every breath that you're taking, Imagine that a little light is entering into your body, giving you warmth, giving you happiness, and giving you love. And with every exhale, you just let this light taking over the place of the pain that you're feeling. Just give yourself the possibility to feel this love filling you. Observe this feeling for one more cycle of breath. <coughs> 
Then inhale, exhale, and let your hand go, let the pain go, open your eyes. And now, put your hand up if you felt more pain for the first instruction. Okay? Okay, put your hand up if you felt more pain for the second instruction. Okay, if you did not feel pain at all. Okay, it's possible. Good. So we've seen how our sensation of pain changed through the impact of emotions and attention. But what if our magic wand doesn't work properly? In the brain, many, many, many cells work together as a system to make the pattern of spell work good. Okay, but what if there is a problem in the brain? In Parkinson's disease, a brain area that is particularly important in pain modulation is affected by the disease. So imagine the following situation. Harry Potter has Parkinson's disease. A Dementor is approaching him, so he tries to perform the Patronus spell. And then what? What's going to happen? Will the Patronus spell still be strong enough to protect him from the pain? Since it's unethical to torture people with dementors at the Hogwarts, <clears throat> here's what I'm doing to give an answer to this question. I stimulate my dear participants with this instrument by using a moderate intensity pain stimulation. But before I would do that, I influence their mind. I make them believe that sometimes this sensation is going to be a low intensity pain or a moderate one or a high one. And when I make people believe that it's going to be a low-intensity pain, they are relieved. They are almost happy. And this positive emotion can reduce their sensation of pain. While on the contrary, moderate intensity belief is not really changing anything in terms of their sensation, as indeed I am already stimulating them with the moderate intensity. And when I make them believe it's going to be a high-intensity pain, it is increasing their pain sensation. So... When I make Parkinson's disease patients believe that it's going to be a low-intensity pain, will their pain sensation decrease? I don't know yet. What is for sure that changes in the nervous system do contribute to the development of chronic pain. And I'm going to do my best to find out how the ability of modulating pain is changing in Parkinson's disease to save the visiting word. Thank you for your attention.